This screencast accompanies the tutorial on debugging in R. In particular, we'll see uh, an actual demonstration of using R's interactive debugging tools to de debug a relatively simple example case. So here's the data, which was shown in the tutorial documents. And the function that gets called by the user is gamma underscore jackknife. And if we run this function to execute the jackknife procedure on this cat heart weight data, which is provided in the mass package, we'll see that we get an error back. Unfortunately, uh, there are two things uh, to notice about this error. The first of these is it's a little bit hard to decipher if you don't know what is.atomic uh, is telling you. And secondly, it doesn't tell you which, in which of these functions uh, the error occurs. Um, note that RStudio has helpfully uh, popped up some messages here that relate to the debugger. For the purpose of this screencast, I'm going to use R's base functions without using a lot of the functionality in um, RStudio, just to illustrate that, that you can use these tools uh, in R without going through RStudio. But you can, of course, also use these, these various tools um, with the shortcuts provided by RStudio. So the first thing that we might want to do here is try and figure out in which of these function calls the error occurs. For that, the traceback function is quite useful. So if we type traceback, what we'll see is, is the nested series of function calls that were made up to the point at which the error occurs. So we see that um, the error occurs in evaluating this is.atomic function. That's not particularly helpful because we don't know where is.atomic is called from. But we can then see that it's called from an anonymous function. That's why we see the capital FUN. And it makes sense that, that's being, that that anonymous function is being called in our apply statement, which we can see is actually called in the calc var function. So the series of function calls that occurs are that we call gamma jackknife. These lines of code here execute. We then call calc var. And in the calc var function, um, an apply statement is, is executed. And in the execution of that apply statement, in particular the execution of the var function, which is the same as this, this anonymous capital FUN uh, mentioned here, that's where the error occurs. So we've already made quite a bit of progress in being able to drill down into this nested series of function calls and see what the problem is, or see where the problem is. The next thing that we might want to do is actually go into the calc var function and see what the, situ what the situation is within the function at the time that the error occurs. For that, traceback is not very helpful because it only um, gives us the series of function calls retrospectively. Instead, we want to be able to actually enter into the body of the function and examine the objects in the function at the time just before the, the error occurs. So we're going to use the recover function. In particular, we're going to set an R option um, that says when an error occurs, call the recover function. And that's then going to give us back information much like traceback gave us, but it's actually going to allow us to enter into any, any one of the functions in this series of function calls and examine the state of the function. So we're going to type options error equals recover, and now we're going to rerun uh, our call to uh, our execution of the gamma jackknife uh, function. So let's go ahead and run that line of code. And now you'll notice that in addition to telling us the series of calls, although in this case now they're in sort of reverse order from what traceback gave us, it actually allows us to select one of these functions and go in and see uh, the state of the function. So we want to go in and see what the state of the calcvar function is. So we'll type 2. Um, and now if we type ls, uh, we can see that the only object um, existing in the function um, at, the, at the start of the execution of the function is the estimates argument, the estimates um, object, which of course is the argument to the function. So we could, for example, examine the estimate um, estimates uh, object and see if we can get a sense for why it is that we cannot apply the var function to each of the columns of estimates. So if we type class of estimates, it says it's a matrix, so that's a good sign. It seems like nothing that, that we should be able to calculate the variance of each of the columns of a matrix. Um, however, if we go ahead and try and actually ex execute um, the variance function on, on one of those, um, on any one of those uh, columns, 
we'll see that we do indeed get the, the error message that, that is the error message we were getting when we tried to execute the entire uh, body of code. So this does, it, it does see, indeed seem to be the case that the variance of a column cannot be calculated for some reason that we have not yet discovered. So the next thing that we might do is we might say, well, what is it that this column of estimates uh, looks like to try and see why we can't calculate the variance? And all of a sudden, the error is, is essentially revealed to us, which is we see that this column of estimates is actually a list. Um, and we cannot calculate the variance of a list. We can only calculate the variance of a vector or of an, a vector of, of actual numbers. Um, so this indicates uh, to us that somehow or another, in the process of creating this matrix um, of these estimates, which we, which we were thinking was a numeric matrix, that we've actually uh, created a, a matrix that somehow contains list elements in it, and that's the, the cause of the error. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of uh, this browser window. Um, and this will get us back to the regular R prompt and out of any debugging context. The next thing that we might want to do, and particularly this would be the case if we had a complicated enough set of functions that we didn't want to just start to look through the code uh, directly to try and see what the problem is, is we might use the debug function to step through the individual lines of our code and try and see where this, where this list uh, aspect of things is being created. So we know that um, calcvar is called from the gamma jackknife function, so we might actually just um, think about uh, using the debug function on the gamma jackknife function. Of course, in this simple case, we, we could probably just set the value of, uh, of an object called data to be the input cats dollar sign heart weight and actually run the lines of code in gamma jackknife uh, individually just um, based on the fact that R is an interpreted language and we can run individual lines of code. But in more complicated cases, it's helpful to actually be able to use the, de use the debug function and tell R exactly which function to um, run through line by line and uh, to have R set up all of the input arguments for us instead of us having to do it manually. So let's illustrate that uh, here. So we're going to apply the debug function to gamma jackknife. And then now, when we go ahead and run um, now when we go ahead and run the gamma jackknife function on that uh, data set as we've been doing, it now enters us into the debugger that's going to allow us to step through our, the individual lines of code in the function one by one. So if I go ahead and type n, I'm going to um, go through and um, it's going to now um, start running the function line by line. Um, it's going to this this line here indicates that the next line of code it'll execute is this fourth line of code n gets length of data. So if I type n again, I could now, for example, type print of n. I don't want to type n to try and print out the value because that's a special debugging um, that special debugging syntax. If I actually want to print out the value of the variable, I can type print n. That tells me that uh, n is currently 144. Um, I might type um, uh, next and continue on. Um, at this point, I could keep typing next, and this is going to step through the individual lines of this for loop, but I might want to actually uh, run the entire for loop and then get to the point where the calcvar um, function is called. So to do that, I would type C for continue. And now we're at the point where jack estimates would be passed into the calcvar function. So at this point, I might look at jack estimates and see that indeed this has already been created as a list. So what we've done here is we've actually gone a little bit too far in our function in terms of our debugging process and we haven't isolated the point where the, where the initial um, list is created. So let's go ahead and quit out of this and now I'm going to call the um, I'm going to call the function yet again and I'm going to try and uh, stop, I'm going to try and sort of evaluate where things are going wrong earlier on in the process of, of writing the code in this function. So let's type n, let's type n now let's go ahead and see, uh, execute this line of code uh, that first uh, creates jack estimates. And let's go ahead and see what jack estimates actually looks like. Looks like. 
And all the, and at this point, we now realize that Jack that the result of running gamma the gamma estimate function is actually returning a list, and that is probably the cause of our problems because in this for loop here, we're R binding together a bunch of values that are the result of running the gamma est function, and so we're R binding together a bunch of lists, and that's going to create this matrix of list elements that causes the problem. So this suggests that the error act is actually occurring in the gamma underscore est function. So let's go ahead and quit out of the browser and now let's start to try and do some debugging within the gamma est uh, function. So in this simple case we could just look at this code and realize that the gamma est function instead of returning a vector of the values of a and s which are the parameters of the fitted distribution it's returning a list and that's the cause of our problems because um, we're not returning something that we can be combined together with r bind to create a matrix in uh, gamma under, a matrix of numbers in gamma underscore jackknife. But let's suppose that gamma est was a somewhat more complicated function and suppose that we, want, we thought that the error might be occurring somewhat later on in the function and we wanted to insert a, um, a call to the browser function so we could start a debugging session somewhere in the middle of the gamma underscore est function. For that the use of the trace function is useful and we're going to say trace of gamma est and then we're going to say edit equals true and this will allow us to insert any arbitrary code into the gamma est function um, including a call to browser and then later on we can easily remove that inserted code without having to manually go in and, 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 and revert things back to the original version of the function. So I'm going to say trace of uh, gamma est edit equals true. I can now go in for example and suppose that I thought the problem might be occurring somewhere in the middle here. I could insert a call to browser that will start up debugging, line by line debugging at the fifth line of code here. I could insert it manually with that and then say save. Um, and now I'm going to undebug the gamma jackknife function because I don't want to line by line debug that. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and run my entire workflow again. So let's go back here. We're going to run this line of code. And now you'll notice that the, um, the debugger has now put us into the gamma est function at the point where I inserted the browser call, although you can't actually see the, the browser call in this original version of the function. Um, so we could, for example, now again type n. We could type um, n again and type print and see what s looks like. We could type n again and see what a looks like. And now we're at the point of seeing that this is the last line of the function that's going to call, get called. And at this point, if we hadn't already noticed it, we would presumably notice that a list was getting created and that was the cause of all of our problems. So that's the conclusion of this demonstration. We used this uh, example um, to see the use of a variety of R's uh, debugging functions, all of which basically, which, well, which amount to two different main um, functionalities. One is to be able to walk through code line by line, um, either by calling the debug function or by inserting a call uh, to the browser function. And another is being able to see the nested series of function calls that led to the error occurring.